Before we begin, I would like to point out that we'll be going through the entire plot of Silent Hill, and many spoilers lay ahead. With that out of the way, enjoy the video. Our story begins with a brief scene of our protagonist driving late in the night into the resort town of Silent Hill. Harry Mason is accompanied by his seven-year-old daughter who sits asleep in the passenger seat. As Harry drives on, he is soon encountered with the figure of a young woman standing in the road. He swerves out of the way, the scene fading into black. And here, our story begins. Our protagonist awakens in the aftermath of the wreckage and realizes his daughter is no longer next to him. He exits the vehicle and proceeds onwards to find her. Harry now finds himself within the town, surrounded by a dense fog and an eerie silence. He suddenly hears footsteps in the distance and runs onwards to seek their origin in hope that they might be those of his daughter. Upon discovering her ahead of him, he calls out to her, but she doesn't respond. Hey, wait. Stop. and instead runs onward, further into the fog. He chases after her through a nearby alley and soon stumbles upon what seems to be the bloody remains of an animal, a token of horror and adding to the idea that something is seriously wrong. Harry proceeds onwards and we, the audience, are introduced to one of the many skillfully placed camera angles that we will encounter throughout the story. Harry continues further on when suddenly daylight flees the alley and an uncanny siren begins to wail in the background. Harry ignites his lighter and ventures on. He comes across a corpse in a hospital gurney, covered in blood, he proceeds to trail off deeper down the path. Unearthly music intensifies as Harry locates a mutilated body. What is this? As Harry turns around, he is attacked by strange creatures. He attempts to escape back up the alley, but the path is blocked. Nowhere to turn, nowhere to run. And here, our protagonist succumbs to a terrible fate. Now you may think that this is where Harry's story ends, but things aren't always as they seem in the town of Silent Hill. You may wonder how and why certain things happen, but many strange things occur here, and sometimes we aren't sure of what's real and what's not. A theme I would like you to keep in mind throughout the story. Speaking of which, our next scene opens with our distraught protagonist awakening in a gloomy diner. Here we are introduced to Sybil Bennett, a police officer from the next town over, investigating the strange events in Silent Hill. After a short introductory exchange, they share their concerns about the town, and Harry asks if she's seen his daughter, which she replies in the negative. Before heading back in search for his daughter, Sybil supplies Harry with a handgun to help defend himself against any threats, and tells him to be careful. She leaves the diner in pursuit to get reinforcements, leaving Harry behind. Harry grabs a series of useful items from the diner and returns into the foggy town. He makes his way back to the alley where he lost saw Cheryl and locates a page from a sketchbook directing him towards the nearby school. Harry makes his way there as the town becomes enveloped in nightfall and promptly enters through the front doors. On entering, Harry finds himself alone within the school. He discovers three riddles written in blood and sets out to complete them. He proceeds on through the courtyard and immediately is attacked by monsters that bear resemblance to children, many of which encompass the school. Harry is forced to defend himself and continues on to navigate the hallways. Harry completes all three of the riddles, each rewarding him with a different medallion, 
granting him passage through a clock tower in the courtyard. Harry makes his way through the tight space and ascends back into the courtyard where he entered from. Except things are... different. A cultic circle sits upon the ground inscribed with mysterious symbols. Harry enters back into the school building, but his surroundings have morphed into a hellish landscape. Terrifying imagery plagues the school, and monsters beset the hallways. He stumbles into a nearby classroom and is greeted by the haunting sound of a phone ringing. Cheryl! We now make our way to the basement where a new sort of horror awaits us. A giant beast with a head split into two halves emerges from the darkness and sets out to attack. Harry defends himself and after gruesome trial, manages to slay the wicked beast. A siren begins to wail in the distance and darkness envelops the scene. Harry reawakens inside the school basement, and before him stands the apparition of a young woman. She promptly fades away, leaving us behind. Harry makes his way back to the first floor and is relieved to see that the horrorscape that once plagued the school is gone. Harry hears the sound of a church bell in the distance. Leaving the school, Harry sets his eye towards the church. Upon entering, we are introduced to a strange woman. Harry confronts her and presses her for information about his daughter. The woman, being rather vague, informs Harry that he must follow the path and make haste to the hospital. She provides him with a strange artifact called the flowers and proceeds to leave the church. Harry makes his way through the fog and towards the hospital, entering through the front doors. Here we are introduced to Dr. Michael Kaufman. He, like Harry, is also unaware of why the town has become the way it has. Harry asks him about his missing daughter, but he says that he hasn't seen her. He wishes Harry good luck, and the two part ways. Harry begins exploring the hospital and discovers a strange liquid within the director's office that he takes a sample of. He continues to explore, turning the generator on to gain access to the elevator. A mysterious fourth floor that isn't supposed to be there appears in the control panel. Upon ascending to this level, Harry is reintroduced to the familiar horoscope he witnessed at the school, now taking grasp of the hospital. His path hindered by unearthly nurses and doctors that he must fight through. Behind a wooden cabinet, Harry finds a secret area below the hospital a ward for special patients. In one of the rooms, Harry finds a picture frame of a familiar young woman, and here we are given her name. Alessa. Harry makes his way back to the first floor, where we are encountered with a very frightened girl.
Lisa Garland introduces herself, a nurse of the hospital, and informs Harry that she's been unconscious this whole time, and is also unsure of what's going on with the town. Harry asks about the basement, but she tells him that it's strictly off limits to the staff. Suddenly, a siren begins wailing in the distance. What's wrong? Harry? Harry, let me help you. Harry? Harry reawakens in the hospital, the hellscape now absent, and is greeted once again by the mysterious woman from the church. She tells us her name and explains that darkness is devouring the town and that Harry is the only one who can stop it. She lays a key on the table and leaves once again. The key's tag leads us to the Silent Hill antique shop to where Harry now makes his way towards. He locates the shop and descends the stairs within. He enters the store, and behind a wooden cabinet, he discovers a secret passageway. Just as he's about to enter, Sybil walks into the store behind him. She tells Harry that she was unable to get help from outside the town. All the roads have been blocked, and communications have gone silent. She tells Harry that she saw a little girl that could have been his daughter, but she was traversing the fog as if she was a ghost, and was unable to follow her. Sybil then brings up an important point about the town. The police have been investigating a narcotic scandal within Silent Hill. Drugs are being distributed to tourists who come to the town, and the police have been unable to find out who is behind it. This will be good to keep in mind for later. Harry makes his way through the passage and discovers a strange altar. It ignites in flames, and Harry is transported out of this realm. Where am I? Harry. Lisa? Then I'm in the hospital? You were having a bad dream. Was I? Hey, you don't look too good. Are you okay? I'm fine. Nothing you need to worry about. Well, if you're sure... Lisa, do you know a woman named Dahlia Gillespie? Oh yeah, that crazy Gillespie lady. She's kind of famous around here. She never sees anybody, so I don't know that much about her. But I heard her kid died in a fire, and supposedly she's been crazy ever since. Well, she says the town is being devoured by the darkness. Do you have any idea what she's talking about? The town devoured by the darkness. Yes, I think I do. Before this place was turned into a resort, the townspeople here were on the quiet side. Everybody followed some kind of queer religion. Weird occult stuff, black magic, that kind of thing. As young people moved away, the people figured they'd been summoned by the gods. Evidently, things like that used to happen around here all the time. Before the resort, there really wasn't anything else out here. Everyone was so flipped out, you gotta blame it on something. Then a lot of new people came in and everybody clammed up about it. A cult? Last time I heard anything about it was, gosh, years ago. When several people connected with developing the town died in accidents. People said it was a curse. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm rambling. I'll shut up. Harry awakens in the familiar hellscape realm that we've seen before, now within the antique shop. He questions his sanity and proceeds back into the town. Harry sets out towards the hospital in hopes that Lisa might be able to give him guidance towards the lake. He enters into a nearby shopping mall and is greeted with an eerie scene. Cheryl! 
how he makes his way back onto the hellish path towards the hospital. After finally arriving, he returns to Lisa. Lisa tells Harry that there is an underground tunnel beneath the waterworks that should lead him to the lake. She pleads with Harry to stay with her and not leave her alone, but Harry, in pursuit to find his daughter, sets out regardless. Harry makes his way to the waterworks and descends into the tunnels below. He fends off the monsters that reside within and makes his way out the other side. Harry emerges on the other side of town and runs into Kaufman in a nearby bar. After being saved, Kaufman leaves the bar, forgetting behind his apartment key and a receipt with a four-digit code written on it. Harry collects these items and makes his way to a nearby convenience store, which he unlocks with Kaufman's code. Within the store, Harry locates a safe filled with a mysterious drug. Harry is led to a nearby inn and comes across a newspaper within. Investigation stalled. PTV dealers still at large. Suspicious deaths continue. A name is given to our mysterious drug, PTV, and it seems that any attempts to stop its spread result in strange deaths. Upon searching Kaufman's apartment, Harry finds a hidden barrow with a motorcycle key placed inside. He takes the key and locates the motorcycle in a nearby garage. He uses the key to open the tank and finds within a small glass vial filled with a strange liquid. It has a strong resemblance to the strange liquid we found on the hospital floor. Kaufman enters the scene and snatches the bottle away from Harry. Kaufman noticeably insecure about Harry's discovery. He leaves the room and Harry sets out towards the pier, the world warping around him. Harry is led to a boat on the side of the pier where he once again comes in contact with Sybil. Harry. Harry tells her that he's starting to make sense of the strange events inside the town and explains to her that it seems that it's being overtaken by another world. This is the nightmarish hellscape that we've seen invading Harry's world. Dahlia enters behind them and speaks of the horrors that are slowly overtaking Silent Hill. She tells Harry that he must stop the evil that is trying to take his daughter's form, and to do so, he must make his way to the amusement park. Go to the lighthouse on the lake, and to the center of the amusement park. Make haste, you are the only hope. Sybil goes on ahead while Harry investigates the nearby lighthouse. He climbs the spiral staircase to the top, where a circle encompasses the ground above. Wait! Damn, I was too late. He heads back down and makes his way to the amusement park. He soon locates Sybil inside a nearby carousel, except something is not right with her. She seems possessed by something and starts attacking Harry. Harry, in an attempt to save her, throws the strange liquid he collected at the hospital at her. She falls to the ground and a grotesque creature is exorcised from her body, returning her to normal. An important piece of information is provided by Harry here. Harry, why did they take your daughter? Why her? I'm not sure myself. But, you know, Cheryl isn't my biological daughter. 
I actually haven't told her yet. She probably already knows anyway, though. We found her abandoned on the side of the highway. Nobody knew where she came from. We didn't have any kids of her own. My wife was sick. And it didn't look like she was getting any better. So we took Cheryl in. So in that case... There might be some connection between Cheryl and this town. So what do you do now? Cheryl is my daughter. I will save her no matter what. Harry continues into the amusement park where he comes face to face with Alessa. The strange artifact we had for all this time begins to glow in Harry's pocket. And upon releasing it, sends a beam of energy towards Alessa, knocking her to the ground. Dahlia enters from the darkness, and here her true intentions are finally revealed. It turns out that Alessa is actually her daughter, the one that supposedly died in a house fire many years ago, and that she's been using Harry this whole time. Before we can learn more, Dahlia interacts with Alessa, and a strange energy collapses the scene into darkness. Lisa, what happened? Where's Alessa and Dahlia? Harry, listen. Something you said before has been bothering me. I just can't get it out of my head. What is it, Lisa? So I went to look in the basement. Even though I was scared as hell. Like you said, there were these creepy rooms, but nothing really unusual down there. But while I was down there, I got this weird feeling. Like I'd been there before. Like something happened there, but I can't quite remember somehow. What was it? Harry, help me. I'm so scared. I can't take this. It's only a temporary thing. You're in shock from when you were knocked out. Don't fret about it. You'll remember after a while. No. You don't understand. Wait! Where do you think you're going? Harry once again finds himself within the Otherworld Hospital. He sets out to find Lisa, and after making his way through a series of corridors, he finds her. And here, we are presented with a hauntingly beautiful scene. Harry? Lisa, what's the matter with you? I get it now. Why I'm still alive even though everyone else is dead. I'm not the only one who's still walking around. The same as them. I just hadn't noticed it before. Lisa. Stay by me, Harry. Please. I'm so scared. Help me. Save me from them. Please. Harry. <laughs>
Jason. I would just like to take a moment to talk about this scene and give it credit for what it does. I think it's important to point out that this game came out over 20 years ago and this animation was way ahead of its time. It's impressive even by today's standards. The way the blood silently but profusely pours down her face. The way her eye flutters when it meets the blood. The limp in her walk. The way her countenance conveys such a powerful emotion, all accompanied by such beautiful music. Lisa is begging Harry for help, but in fear, he shoves her away when she's in a moment of such desperation. The response is real. He's afraid. He runs behind the door and barricades it shut as she bangs from the other side. The player can't help but feel a combination of sympathy and fear. A concept that the Silent Hill games expertly convey. It's a heartbreaking human response to a terrifying situation. Upon re-entering the room, we find that Lisa is no longer there, but a diary on the floor remains. And it's revealed to us that she was in charge of looking after a special patient in the basement of the hospital. The patient was in terrible condition, having wounds that weren't able to heal. Lisa details herself in terrible condition as well, having hallucinations and being constantly sick, crying for help, a consequence of a horrifying drug addiction. Harry makes his way to the basement, where we're introduced to a series of scenes that I feel need to be explained. We first see a scene of young Alessa trapped inside a small room, writing scrawled across the walls. We here are able to identify the purpose of the secret ward beneath the hospital, a series of rooms for the sole purpose of Alessa. The next scene takes place in one of the other rooms where we see a bloody figure lying in a bed with four people standing around it. Dahlia and Kaufman comprise two of these, while the other two are unidentified. Dahlia begins to explain that everything is going to plan, while the others argue about the conditions of an agreement. Before we reach the ending of our story, I believe it is necessary to draw lines between all the information we have so far, and connect the story together so we can properly understand the final scene. Seven years prior to the events that take place within our story, an evil cult resided in Silent Hill. This cult desired to gain power and bring darkness to the world. In aids towards this, they made Silent Hill into a tourist location to lure people into the town which they would then provide drugs to and sacrifice them in cultic rituals. The reasoning for the drugs isn't entirely sure, it could be presumed that if the victims were inebriated, that they would be easier to control and move. Another theory is that the drugs could enhance the effects of the ritual, being that the drugs would instill terrible fear into the users. The cult would then come together to perform an even greater ritual, to birth a god. Dahlia offers her daughter, Alessa, as a means to do this. The ritual involved Dahlia burning their house down while Alessa was still inside. Miraculously, Alessa survived and split her soul in two to prevent the ritual from succeeding, ultimately rendering herself immortal. One half would become Cheryl, who would escape the town and be adopted by Harry, while the other half would stay within Alessa and suffer a terrible fate. Alessa would be kept in the hospital where Kaufman would watch over her, assigning Lisa to help take care of her in secret. Lisa would comply in order to fulfill her drug addiction which was being supplied by Kaufman. In order to complete the ritual, Dahlia cast a spell that would lure Cheryl back to Silent Hill in order to reunite her and Alessa back together. Upon entering the town, their souls are rejoined, causing the ritual to start taking effect and darkness to overtake the town. Now that we've established our story, we are prepared for the final scene.
Harry enters the final room and finds Sybil and Dahlia standing beside two figures. One being the Alessa that survived the fire, wrapped in bandages and immobilized. The other being the second part of her soul, which we know as Cheryl. Dahlia now completes the ritual and Alessa is made whole once again. Dahlia is shot by Kaufman, who now enters the scene. Kaufman, not realizing the extent of his past actions, tries to redeem himself. He proceeds to throw the red bottle that he took from us earlier at Alessa, exercising the demon from her. Harry makes his final stand and defeats the evil creature. Alessa, now released from her chains, reincarnates her soul into an infant child and gives herself to Harry so that she may start life anew, separated from all the evil she's had to endure. Lisa rises from the depths and drags Kaufman down below, and the last remnant of Alyssa's soul frees Harry and Sybil from the darkness that collapses around them. Thank you all so much for watching. If any of you would like to support me and the channel, please consider joining me on Patreon. I offer my own personal piano covers of the soundtracks that you've heard throughout the video, as well as a bunch of behind the scenes stuff. By supporting me, you'll not only be helping me create more frequent and higher quality videos, but you'll be helping me continue doing what I love.